guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome to my channel this is your first time on my page my name is Sadie Lee I am a personal trainer and a fitness nutrition specialist I own my own personal training business where I get to work one-on-one -on -one privately alongside all of my clients over the course of many years I have helped thousands and thousands of men and women achieve their fitness goals and dreams and i also own a personal training app over on my app i have on-demand classes workout programs i have daily workouts we have nutrition coming to the app so lots of fun things over there on my app if you don't know i am a mom of two i have a six-year-old and a two-year-old and the reason i say that is because i have been through two postpartum journeys where i have trained myself and i have taught myself how to reclaim my identity back and i have made it such a priority of mine to really find myself again through motherhood in this video i'm going to give you eight very realistic steps and actions you can take today to transform your fitness journey these steps are very realistic they're very applicable when i was starting out in my journey i just wanted someone to tell me exactly what i needed to do and i was going to do starting off number one is going to be find your why for me after i gave birth to my sons my why was i just wanted to find myself again there were many nights where i would lay in bed it was actually with my first son. I would lay in bed next to my husband and I would look down at my legs and I just, I truly did not recognize the body that I was in postpartum. And so I, not only was I so lost with my identity when I looked in the mirror, I also didn't have what I felt like was a purpose outside of motherhood. And so my why was just to find Sadie again. A lot of people will start their fitness journeys out like I wanna lose 10 pounds, I would like to see visible abs for the first time. Although those are all very good reasons to start and those are all very motivating reasons to start, your why really needs to be more profound and more personal because those surface level goals that you have aren't going to cut it on the days that you are really struggling to show up for your workouts and on the days that you are really struggling to follow your plan. Your why should be something like improving your overall health, being a positive example for your children. Your why has to be deeper than surface level. Like I said, although it's enough to get you going, the first week the first two weeks it's not enough to carry you through those really difficult days because you will have those really difficult days so you have to be able to check in with yourself on those difficult moments when you're wanting to quit when you're wanting to give up and when you're not wanting to do what you know you should be doing you need to be able to check in and be like okay why did i start this in the first place it's because i want to be a good example for my children it's because i want to have enough energy to chase after my grandchildren you have to be able to dig into that deeper reason why and let that carry you branching off of that it's going to be very difficult at first like i, I mentioned we're gonna have really hard days on this journey in the days when you do mess up because you will mess up instead of saying things like i messed up i suck i knew i couldn't do this whatever the lie is that you want to tell yourself you need to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say i am learning i am teaching myself how to become the person i'm wanting to be i am getting rid of old habits and slowly developing new habits you just have to really not only understand that it's gonna be difficult but give yourself grace on the days that it is difficult and then be able to help yourself navigate through those difficult days because they will come number two is going to be the mental shift this one is the biggest i really want you to change your mindset from fixing yourself fixing your body fixing whatever that thing is that you're trying to quote unquote fix but really embracing the growth mindset and starting out a lot of people have the initial motivation to get going right it usually starts with oneself being completely fed up with where they're at in life and that is enough to get someone going but in order to maintain the results in order to continue seeing and achieving results you have to eventually become that person and so before becoming that person you have to show up as that person even before you even 
are her, even before you are him. I've worked with enough people to know that when starting out in this journey, subconsciously we don't believe that we're actually going to achieve these results this time and that mindset absolutely has to change the reason you don't believe that you're actually going to achieve these results this time is because you have proven to yourself enough times that you're not going to follow through with what you say and so that has to change you have to change your subconscious you have to actually believe that i don't know how i'm gonna do it i don't know what's gonna be different this time all i know is i actually will do what i said i was going to do this time that mental shift has to change you also have to understand that the work comes before the belief the why is what's going to be enough to get us started but you have to put in the work before you're actually going to start believing. You have to start with the feeling of just being so fed up and so tired with where you're currently at. And then that will encourage the initial work, the initial jump to get you started. And then once you get to work for a while, once you get consistent for a while, then you start to see some progress. Then that progress encourages the work, but the work has to come before the belief. You kind of just continue that process. Number three is you need a workout program. This is for many reasons. But the main two reasons I recommend you being on a workout program is if you want to get the most of your time, if you are actually setting out to see results and change your body, there are systems you have to follow. And so finding a good workout program that is going to put you in progressive overload, that's going to keep you consistent, that's going to challenge your body is what's going to get you the best results. The other reason that it's important to follow a workout program is because when you're first starting out and you really don't know what you should be doing, it's so much easier to just not have the mental load of trying to figure out what you should be doing, but instead be able to just log into your phone and pull up a program and follow that program and mark it off each day instead of guessing and doing random workouts. And a lot of the times doing random workouts is just waste of your time so I highly recommend for those two reasons to start just find a workout program I'd be a bad coach if I didn't have tools for you so I have many tools for you if you are looking for a workout program you can join my app for free for the first week and give it a try when I write these workouts I have the everyday mom in mind the person who needs a quick and efficient 30 minute workout but knows that what they're doing is actually going to get them results so I have many different programs for you. We have home options, we have gym options, I have deep core workouts for you. So I do have a lot of tools and things that you guys can utilize over in the app. No one size fits all when it comes to workout programs. And so you really need to find a workout program that is tailored to you and your needs based off of your current fitness level, your time commitments, your fitness goals, and your fitness preferences. So finding a workout program that can tailor to all of your needs is very important because overall what's most important is how consistent you can be with your workout program. And so if you are not enjoying the plan and if you cannot adhere to the plan, you won't see results. Number four is you need a nutrition plan. The way that you're gonna find a nutrition plan that's gonna work for you is you first need to establish what your goals are. Are you wanting to lean out and lose body fat? Are you wanting to maintain your body weight and possibly change body composition? Or are you wanting to build muscle, build mass, build size? Based off of that answer, that would then determine whether you need to be in a caloric deficit, maintenance calories, or in a surplus with your calories. I reference calories not in the sense that you need to track, regardless if you wanna track or not, calories in versus calories out matter and they do determine what type of results you will be getting from your workout program. Regardless of what diet you wanna be on, regardless of your eating preferences, if you are wanting to lean out and tone up and lose body fat, you must be in a caloric surplus. And so 
whatever route you want to take to get there, just have that in mind. I'm not saying you need to track your calories by any means. It is a good tool to have in your back pocket to be able to turn on, to be able to understand what you're eating. However, there are other avenues you can take. There are other, there are many diets you can follow. There's many things you can do with your nutrition, whether that be intuitively eating, following a vegan diet, paleo, keto, whatever you want to do. Just be mindful of your goals and where you are at with calories in versus calories out. Another thing I wanted to mention about tracking is that tracking your calories and your macros is not a lifestyle. It is not something I believe should be done as a way of life, as a way of constant eating and constant nutrition. I believe if you have a goal, it's something you should know like I said, to be able to turn on, to be able to pull that tool out of your back pocket and achieve those goals. I also believe it's important for the everyday person to understand how much calories and the nutrient content that is in something because most people don't know how much they're eating. They don't know how much sugar they're getting. They don't know how much protein they are or most of the times aren't getting in their diet. Even if you aren't wanting to track your calories and macros, understanding and maybe teaching yourself might be a good way to start. Building off of that would be your protein intake. A good rule of thumb to how much protein you should be getting in in a day is about one gram of protein per goal body weight. Let's say your goal is to lose body fat and you are 170 pounds and you want to be 150 pounds. A good goal to start with with protein would be to set your protein goal at about 150 grams of protein. It does change and it does vary depending on your starting point and where you're wanting to get definitely recommend you consulting with a professional number five is changing your view on exercise and nutrition a lot of people have a very i believe what is a negative view on exercise and we like to correlate it with weight loss where I think we need to look at exercise as much more than that. Exercise is a way that we can take care of our overall health, our longevity. It's a way that we can strengthen our body, improve endurance, and improve sports activity, improve our quality of life. It is so much more than just weight loss. Although exercise can aid in weight loss and calories burned in a day, its primary goal is overall health and longevity. Then when it comes to nutrition, much like exercise, people have this idea around nutrition and eating healthy as dieting and weight loss. And the word diet just has just such a negative perspective on it. And so if you can change your idea of eating healthy from this negative thing of needing to lose weight and restriction and depriving yourself to a way of nourishing your body and taking care of your body and giving your body what it needs and truly what it deserves then it's going to be much easier for you to adhere to eating what you know you should be eating because it it's not this negative thing you you're not feeling like you're depriving yourself or punishing yourself you can go into it feeling like you're taking care of yourself and you're eating the things you should be eating in order to feel your best and fuel your body for the workouts that you've been doing and the daily activity that you're doing and to support your energy levels and your hormones and everything. So really shifting your mindset with nutrition is gonna help immensely. Number six is track your progress. You can track our progress through a few different avenues, whether that be weigh-ins, measurements, tracking your body fat percentage or taking photos doesn't matter what you do, I just recommend you tracking your progress in some sense. I recognize that some people may have a poor relationship with weighing in in the scale. And although the scale is not always accurate, in fact, a lot of the times it really doesn't give us the best idea of where we're at as far as progress goes. That's why I recommend taking the photos and taking the measurements and doing your body fat percentage because the more avenues we have of tracking your progress, the better because a lot of the times 
the scale might not change at all, but your photos are changing. Just the more ways you can track your progress, the better. Another reason it is important that you track your progress is because it tells us if you need to make adjustments to your plan. You don't want to go in to your training plan and trying to achieve results blindly. You really want to check in with yourself each week and see, okay, did I make progress from last week? If I didn't, if it's been about one to two weeks of me following my plan, executing the plan, doing what I should be, yet I'm not seeing the results I should be, you can look back at what's happened the last two weeks and make adjustments to your plan. Because although progress is not always linear, over the course of eight to 12 weeks of following a program, you should be making some sort of adjustments. So having the progress tracked alongside following your program and tracking the weights you're using, how many times a week you're, you're working out and you're lifting and you're doing your cardio and your nutrition plan, tracking everything will help you immensely with figuring out what variables need to be changed in order to avoid plateaus at best. Number seven is free meals, not free days. If you are familiar with my training at all or you know me in the real world, I am not the biggest fan of cheat meals. I don't like to call them cheat meals because I don't believe you're cheating on anything. I like to call them fun meals, free meals, whatever it is, pizza night with your family. I think those things off of your plan are important. I believe balance, I believe in the 80-20 rule, I believe having that balance is so important even when you are adhering to a plan, even when you are trying to achieve certain results. Sometimes memories over macros are important. So changing this for me actually really helped me so much on my fitness journey when it came to actually seeing results because what I used to do back when I was learning and just starting out. Let's say I went out to breakfast with the family and I had something that was off my plan that I typically wouldn't have. What I would do is I felt as though I had blown my entire day. And so that led to a downward spiral of, you know, not having the best meal for lunch and then not having the best meal for dinner. And then if I had a workout that night, I would I would feel as though I already messed up so I wouldn't show up for my workout. So what shifted for me is I would allow myself to have that breakfast, that fun breakfast. Let's say it was pancake house, just yummy pancakes with my family. I now thoroughly enjoy that meal with my family. And then for lunch, I'll have what was planned, whether that was a healthy huge salad filled with good proteins and healthy fats and microgreens and then for dinner I would have my normal dinner that I would have and fuel my body and I would still drink my water and I wouldn't feel as though I ruined my whole day. I acknowledge that I had that. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I got to spend the time with my family. I got to be with my kids. I got to be present but then I was on track the rest of the day and I wasn't on track in the sense that I'm sticking to my diet. I'm on track in the sense that I'm feeling my body because I do have a workout plan. I'm still going to hit that workout. I'm not going to allow that meal earlier in the day to bump me off track because there is truly no such thing as good food or bad food. There is food and then that food contains different nutrient contents and other food. Those pancakes that I had for breakfast is no better or no worse than the salad I had for lunch. It just has different nutrient contents in it. It might have more sugar than my salad did. My salad may have more protein and so I, you know, really shifting my mindset on good food or bad food helped me a lot in just understanding that food is food and every once in a while that's okay, a couple times a week that's fine as long as 80% or more I am on it and I'm feeling my body with the foods I know I should be eating, I'm okay. And I can enjoy that food and I can enjoy pizza night with my family wholeheartedly guilt-free. Number eight, I didn't know what to name this one and this really seemed like the most fitting title is just 
freaking do it. Truly just banishing the idea of any excuses and wholeheartedly just for once, for once in your life, just committing to your goals and executing all the way to the end. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have obstacles that are going to throw you off track. If you don't do it now, there will always be something. There will always be a birthday. There will always be a long day at work. There's always going to be something. You have to teach yourself and you have to make it a non-negotiable or you will, you will never get there. You are just starting off on your fitness journey or you've restarted your fitness journey a hundred times over. I just really recommend not allowing yourself to give yourself the out. It's not about how many times you mess up on this journey because you will mess up. You will have days where you can't show up. You will have moments of weakness and that, that's it's a given. You're going to have those moments. It's how you show up the next meal. It's how you show up the next workout. It's how you show up the next day. It's how you handle the mess up and it's how you show yourself grace and acknowledge that maybe that wasn't the best choice. Recognizing that moment and then also recognizing that you are no longer that person. You are no longer the person who allows these excuses. You are now the person who actually does what they told themselves they were going to do. You're actually now the person who doesn't break promises to herself or himself any longer. Those are my eight tips and eight realistic steps that you can take today to actually achieve real realistic results. And these are all things that I have implemented and done and changed in my life in order to be the most healthiest, strongest version of myself that I am today. Even as a working busy mom of two small kids, even with all the excuses in the world, I was able to do it and I know you can do it too. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, message me, email me if you guys have any specific questions because I truly want to help you guys and I truly want to walk that journey with you. So I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.